Oh, hi. I'm the... Wait for it. Wait, how did you know I was coming? I had the feeling. I changed the locks to my pocket dimension, but I knew I was just buying time. So, what can I do for you? I need some Eye of Newt. I was told to get some from you. Eye of Newt? That's racist. W what do you need it for, anyway? I watched this video and it gave me cancer. Shrieks told me I could get some from you. Contrapoints release a part two of why capitalism sucks? It's a heh, <laughs> argument about why the United States needs gun control by the Atlantic. The Atlantic? Say no more. Let's take this bitch apart. You'll give me some Eye of Newt if I do? Sure, why not? Who's Streaks, anyway? Oh, he's a snake. Not very tall. He's a cobra. Uh, very colorful. Anyways, oh hi, I'm the heretic. Hello, my fellow individuals. Today, the Atlantic tries to make their case for gun control, but it's full of misinformation and non-sequiturs, and it only barely qualifies as an argument. So let's tear some gun grabbers apart. For what it's worth, the argument isn't poorly put together and flows nicely while also conveying what they want to say in a way that's clear and concise. The problem is that it's all based on a lie. Hit it! Rights come with responsibilities. Two seconds in and we already have a problem. Two seconds! Our responsibility is a burden, an obligation. They demand positive action. Rights are negative, meaning it is our right to not have things done to us. For example, our right to own property, such as firearms. Our having them does not burden us with an obligation. Owning a dog means you're obligated to feed it and give water to it. What's our obligation for owning a gun? Not murdering people? I think we've got that covered. Understanding this principle is what distinguishes an adult from a child. I couldn't have said it better myself. Understanding how negative rights works is what distinguishes the smart people in society from the brainlit statists. The worst part is that I know he's going to use this as the premise for his future straw man arguments. You drive a car, you need a license. You sell food, you submit to health inspections. Buy a boat, you must insure it and pass a test to operate it. Not guns. That's a good question, actually. Why do we need the status clergy's permission to drive cars or boats? They're obviously not very good at keeping dangerous drivers off the roads, so the reason can't be to keep us safe. The government's health inspectors keep their jobs and money whether or not they're correct. So why should we care about what they think about food vendor safety? It's not like the government is a coercive monopoly that has no incentive to compete, right? Do we really need some inquisitor from the Church of Statism forcing you to buy insurance for your boat? According to the state's high priests, you must be forced to buy health insurance as a condition for being alive. What David Frum is trying to say is that it's only fair that the government uses violence to control access to guns because they do it elsewhere. The problem is that two wrongs don't make a right, and to argue that they do only demonstrates either a warped sense of fairness or a childlike dependence on the nanny state to protect you from the big scary guns. There is no federal duty to undergo training or prove competence. No requirement to demonstrate sound mental health or good character. Prove sound mental health, huh? And who determines what is sound mental health according to your words? The government? Who in the government? How do we determine who gets that power? How do they know who's too mentally ill to own guns? How do we know these politicians and bureaucrats themselves have sound mental health or are of good character? Quote. Furthermore, people with mental health issues have been proven to be not as violent as regular sane individuals. They are more likely, however, the victims of violent crime. What is sound mental health, anyhow? And how do we know who doesn't have it? Schizophrenics? What about people with gender dysphoria? ADD? Autism? According to Alec Baldwin, people who disagree that climate change is man-made are mentally ill. I believe that climate change denial is a form of mental illness. Should we take their gun rights away too? Sluggish schizophrenia is a mental illness the Soviet Union invented as a pretense for locking up political opponents. Now it sounds completely ridiculous that the United States would invent mental illnesses to prevent people from buying guns for political reasons. I mean, they never do that, right? You can trust the government, I promise! No vision test to prove you can see what you're shooting at. Is gun usage by the blind a problem I'm not aware of? Probably. There's no obligation on states to report accurately their protective orders to the federal background check system. Why should they? 
How would another layer of bureaucracy have saved anyone's life in these mass shootings? How many bureaucrats do we need before America is 100% gun crime free? Since you seem so knowledgeable on how more government will save lives, I'd like an exact amount. How much more do we need? How many more laws for the criminals to ignore need to be on the books? Which is why some 700,000 names are missing from that system. Why is that a problem? Are there 700,000 murderers that you don't know the identities of? Or are you just upset that the status clergy doesn't have the ability to spy on people who aren't even breaking your precious government's holy commandments? In Canada, an applicant for a gun license must produce character references, including from spouses and ex-spouses, attesting to good character and sound mental health. Character references from your ex-spouse. What are they going to say? especially if you had gone through some horrible and costly divorce. It's especially bad if the status inquisitor determining if you're of sound character, somehow, is looking for any excuse to prevent you from owning a gun. Whether or not you own a gun should be between you and the seller. The status priesthood has no business involving itself in that transaction. A gun is a machine to dispense death. And here we get the appeal to emotion. Guns are tools, having no initiative of their own. How they're used depends on the user. But if you want to appeal to emotion, we can play that game too. How many people are you okay with being killed as long as nobody has an illegal gun? Why do you want to disarm potential rape victims? A truck is a machine to dispense death. Why are you so afraid of guns? Too many chafe against obvious rules that in every other developed country protect people against gun accidents and gun death. Obvious rules? There's nothing obvious about them. That's a manipulative phrase. You, sir, are manipulating me. There's nothing obvious about disarming people making more potential victims. Grandstanding on the graves of murder victims to push a political agenda does not make you correct. Parkland High School students? Being a victim in a mass shooting doesn't make you an expert on guns. All it makes you is yet another follower of the most violent religion on the planet who wants to use the power of almighty government to victimize people who aren't hurting anyone. If it feels good, do it. That was the old hippie slogan. Conservatives usually reject such self-indulgent permissiveness, but not when it comes to guns. Then it's the me generation all the way. This is a terrible straw man of their argument. And you should feel ashamed for having to come up with it. Firstly, conservatives point out that criminals don't follow the law or how gun control measures aren't effective in stopping crime. For example, the 1990 Gun-Free School Zones Act just so happened to not be effective at stopping the Parkland shooter. What a surprise! Conservatives also cite the Second Amendment. While a piece of paper can't protect your rights, it provides the legal basis that slowed down the gun grabbers so far. After all, boats, cars, and restaurants aren't guaranteed by the Second Amendment. They also point out that the only counter to a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. An argument I know the Atlantic agrees with because they want the police to protect us and they aren't calling for them to be disarmed. These arguments have all been dismissed by the Atlantic completely, claiming conservatives only support gun rights because it feels good. If they're going to accuse millions of people of all being hypocrites in the video title, they should at least be sure not to lie about it. We're not even conservative, we're just being intellectually honest. Maybe they don't know what conservatives actually think. So either they're lying or they're ignorant. Either way, I have no reason to take what they said earlier in this video seriously. Somehow we're expected to surrender our rights to people who, if the official narrative is to be believed, failed to stop the Parkland shooting at every level because they can protect us. We promise. It is a, quote, fundamental principle of American law that a government and its agents are under no general duty to provide public services such as police protection to any individual citizen, unquote. Those aren't my words. That's a majority opinion from the 1981 Supreme Court case Warren v. District of Columbia, which was reaffirmed in 2005 in the Castle Rock v. Gonzalez case. The government will not protect you. It does not recognize an obligation to protect you. The only people who are going to protect you is yourself. You must be made to be afraid of inanimate objects. Your children must be put in danger, and your daughters must be unable to defend themselves from rapists. The people you expect to protect you will sit on their hands while you yourself are gunned down. The Democrat Party needs votes. So we got that done. Can I have my Eye of Newt now? Uh, yeah, you got scammed. Eye of Newt has no magical properties to speak of. So if Streaks is saying that he needs it, then... That motherfu- 
Well, I guess that's the end of the video. Questions, comments, critique? What do you think about what's going on with the Parkland shooting? Did Trump betray us? Like, share, and subscribe to become a heretic today. Also check out and subscribe to Atomic Ancap's channel if you like what you saw.